change, a true symbol of democracy. She is leaving her footprints in the golden sands of history. She is a real democrat. She is truly tested and trusted. I'm Honorable Fatima Bintabello, member representing Kaltungo Shangam. I'm from Shangam Local Government of Gombe State. And I was born after the Biafra War, last early 70s. And my father was an ex-army veteran. I started my Western education in the Southwest precisely on those states. Then I when we were transferred to Kaduna, I have to come back to Gombe State to finish my secondary education in the WTC Bajoga. We are the last set of grade two. That was in nineteen eighty eight. Then I proceeded to just in nine, I started working as a class teacher with the local government service then. Then from there I transferred my services to state government. That was old Bauchi State. I work with Minister of Works and Housing and that area of Gumbi. From 1990 to 2005, where I left for a construction firm in Meduguri. I work with the EEC. No, then when I was working with Minister of Works and Housing, I went to just to have my diploma. I had it in public admin. That was in 1993 to 95. From there, I came back to my working place where I worked for some quite a long time. I left Meduguri, where I work as the appear. It was a Chinese firm construction company. In 2006, the then governor of Gombe State, Dr. Mahmoud Renju Moguji, gave me an appointment as deputy chairman in my local government, as caretaker deputy chairman okay. in my own local government. I served from 2006 to 2007 after his re-election in 2007. Then he appointed me as Commissioner of Women Affairs, where I served as Commissioner for four, almost four years, from 2007 to 2010, November precisely. That was when I resigned to go and contest for House of Resident. My people asked me that I should come and contest, and I give it a try. She retired from the civil service, then she joined politics. Because they were all over her. They know what she would do. That was why all the politicians were around her, all the political parties, but she chose to be with the PDP. I have known Honorable Fatima Bin Tebello from childhood. And since that time, she has been a very exceptional child. Because from a very tender age, she has been humane, kind, very gentle. She likes people around her. And she did a lot when she was in ministry. Even her last kobo, she would just take it and give you. And when I was growing up, considering where my village is and where I'm coming from, and considering the fact that I wasn't born in my village, there is this sympathy I have in my heart for my people. Whenever we visited home, I used to see the kind of water they drink. Their condition of living, in fact, is so devastating. I always tell my father that when I grow up, I become something in life. Well, the first money I will get in life, I have to put it to the community. He asked me why. I say I just want to make a change to them. I want to assist them. He will say that, okay, I will be praying for you to become something in life since you have this will for the people. And since that time, she has been a very exceptional child. You say, oh dear, how do you start that one? You say, hmm. it's, by, it's by His grace. Whenever I sleep, I don't even to sleep. I used to think how I will do with people. First of all, she started with a block of classrooms in her community. Keeping in line with her attitude, I think she built on that in her career. 
So in 2005, that was when my uncle gave me the title of Gadu Damasu. So after my title, I just feel that, okay, I started getting money. Should I go back to the drawing board as I promised that I want to assist my people? Then she was even a civil servant because she went there to the school. She found out that in the classroom, there are about 150 students having three registers. And that was the school she went through. She said, no, they need something. Let me do something. Then she started building. She built a block of classrooms and she furnished it. So when I was going through the due process to give it to the Minister of Education, then the whole started. Because the people in politics in my area then were thinking that why should she come and build a classroom and donate to the community? Maybe she wanted to supersede us in politics or she wanted to outshine us. All the suspicions were, were there. They write a petition to the state government that they shouldn't come to collect the building I'm donating to the secondary school because they are seeing me as ambitious and they are seeing as if opposition are sponsoring me to come and do the project. Then when I met the governor one-on-one, -on -one, I asked him that, Your Excellency, why are you not taking the building I offer to the state government? Say, your people doesn't want us to take. I say, am I donating to my people or am I contributing to the growth of education? He say, you're contributing to the growth of education. I say, if you are not supporting them, then tell your commissioner of education to come and take over the structure. So that very day, we had a very laudable ceremony. The wife of the governor was there. All his aid were there. He sent delegation. So I just declared that, okay, I donated 11 sewing machines to women and 11 motorcycles to the men. I say, okay, today I want to declare that I become a PDP card holder in my own alma mater, that's my village. So that's how I started. She didn't want to just start saying that she wants to get into politics, but it's the politics that said there is a potential in this woman. She will do something for us. Believe me, these are the kind of women that we need in politics, and uh, the women folks should be very proud of her, should continue to support her, because she is doing the women proud and she is doing the state proud as well. I believe that uh, for any society to, th to thrive, uh, the, uh, the women within that society must also must equally thrive. Because uh, women, uh, you cannot quantify the importance of women in any society. As we demonstrated, as you see the women demonstrating yesterday, holding her tight, it's just a sign of saying that what the men can do, the women can do even better. Not because I was the one that was having the ceremony yesterday, but because we have this belief in women that as mothers, as wives, and as daughters, we should care for the men. We should have love for our own children. If really we can love our men and love our children, then definitely we can manage every situation we find ourselves in. That's why women are demonstrating with her tide, and her tide is in the northern Nigeria. It's a sign of being a woman. And that means that they have tested the leadership of women. And I want to tell you that even in Nigeria now, not only in my own constituency, not in my state, even in Nigeria, a lot of women have written their names with a golden pen in Nigeria. It's always the number one challenge for women. People give you that post grudgingly. They don't know whether you will be able to do it or not. And so we have to work extra hard. We have to do things uh, twice as much as uh, men will do it so that the difference will be very, very clear. And uh, she's been up to the task. We can say that she has done excellently well. And that has been even been uh, echoed even by His Excellency and uh, Speaker of the House of Representatives. I was really happy to hear him say very good things about her. It is all encompassing from health to education, from education to um, empowerment in areas of uh, economic activity. And I'm particularly impressed by the van that has been given out to women 
who are into manufacturing and uh, producing of bread here in Kaltungu. That is quite commendable. I would like to publicly acknowledge the fact that Honorable Benta Bello Garba has been one outstanding member of the House of Representatives and she has been doing exceedingly well in the House of Representatives in terms of representation, in terms of committee work, and in terms of what we have seen today. Yesterday, the comment of the Speaker that uh, Honorable Binta Bello is an effective member in the committee system. Uh, she works very hard uh, in our oversight responsibility. She has done very, very well. Even from the chambers and committee activities here at the House of Representatives, she has uh, displayed, you know, extra, and let me use our, you know, word, uncommon, you know, qualities and attributes, you know, for a woman. She is a woman who is very confident. She is a bridge between, you know, the different, uh, you know, women in the House of Representatives. With the comment of the governor of Gombe, that was the icing of the cake. This is one of our quietest constituency. It's one of the forthcoming, very positively forthcoming constituency. And that is why no matter what kind of situation we are inside, we always take time to be with you. Today, I'm here to support Haji Abinta to do what she has just done to contribute in a very little way or in her little way what she can contribute. Like we know, it's not responsibility of Haji Abinta to do what she has done today. As a lawmaker, we elected Haji Abinta to go and make very good laws for us. So anything to the contrary is an addition to the primary the responsibility that the governor has attested yesterday that she has done more and much more is still being expected from her. Even though this is not part of her legislative responsibilities, it is just an extra step in cushioning the primary responsibilities she had to deliver to her constituents. And we want to believe that for a first timer in the Seventh Assembly to perform excellently at all strata, I think it is worthwhile for the people of our constituency to say that she deserves a second chance. I'm not surprised at the giant strides of uh, Honorable Binta. You know, in her constituency, at least yesterday, the people affirmed that they did not mis make a mistake uh, in sending her a woman to represent them and also from uh, the award that she got you know which is an international award some people may think hearing that you get an award they will feel maybe you lobbied for it or whatever but she got an international award because of the way she 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 carried out her affairs in the house of representatives well i'm surprised because i have never known that somebody has been monitoring my legislative activities in terms of committee activities or legislating in the chamber three weeks back i was in the chamber one of my colleagues who was also given an award was there at frankfurt so he came back with my award that they have given you this award and that was where because they just sent me that they have nominated me for the award they did not tell me the details of why did they want to give me the award or what makes me to back the, to get the award until when the certificate of the award came then i show what they have given me the award on i say wow and also her philanthropic uh, nature and yeah uh, the scholarships that she has been given, you know, her assistance to the needy, particularly widows, you know, and the likes. So we are really happy and she has made uh, the women, Nigerian women, proud. For those that live in Gombe, they know what my activities are. Even when I was a commissioner, 
I have about six structures that I have given out to different communities. Before even I was elected as member of House of Reps, I constructed a cl two classrooms somewhere in my own village. Then I constructed and named a building, town hall, after my late uncle, Senator Idris Abubakar. And I have donated four different skill accusation centers and four different communities, namely Tula Baole, Kamu, Awak, and Kushi. All the words in her constituency, about 20 words, every word has benefited. They have solar boreholes. Boreholes she built, she dig about almost 40 boreholes for her community. She built civic center, uh, skill accusation centers, and all the words. If I start mentioning it for you, just of recent, she just did her empowerment program, empowering people. She gave out about 52 kekena pep, 200 sewing machines, um, irrigation pumping machine, barbie saloon kit sets for the youth, and uh, about 100 of it. Then uh, hairdressing saloon uh, kits for about 100, 100 uh, ladies to empower them because uh, ladies, women, and youth are her concern. Then a um, machine for car wash to empower the youth okay, in Italia also, and she donated 100, 100 bed, hospital beds, and mattresses, 100 mattresses, 100 bed sheets, and examination bed for the hospital. But one night, can I pay? Go get a get a gen as if it go in Juno Market, eh? Go in Juno Inji, go Abu Wadokagani and one number Shine. Are you can Yarma Jalisawa? Tai, are you the Dama? For me to appreciate what they have done to me, I did not relent on just saying that they have elected me. I should forget about them. Definitely, I have to come back to show them kind of appreciation. I continued with selecting 300 students in different words. I gave them allocation that's to sponsor them to go to the tertiary institution. The first set that I sponsored, that's the three, first 300 students from a known family to go to university and have their degree. They will graduate. My target is for them to graduate in 2015. I'm a university student and I've been benefiting for this very scholarship courtesy of Bintao Bello. I've been benefiting for three years now. Then I introduced a scholarship scheme to 300